So, don't do like I do, do like I say do. The Baptist preacher thing. Now, when we used that sponge a while ago, I wiped it. Two things for you guys to bear in mind. The longer I let this stay on here, the more it will go in and get what is called a purchase and be stronger. The quicker that I wipe it off, the less the second, third, or fourth colors will have a purchase. Now, when I wipe it, I take off a great deal more than when I blot it. Not that that's profound, but it's true. So, I begin to blot it. Do you see the yellow coming through? The primary color always comes through. The blue is not bad at all. I get the deep spots. And it looks good again. Now, usually I hang down to just a couple of washes. And then I start to put the pure stronger colors on it. Now looking over my shoulders, we see all the colors that we have to choose from. And we can keep this as simple. And that was why I asked y'all while ago to think about what I was doing and how I overworked that sun face. And there's no accounting for taste. You've seen people's clothes and cars and houses and everything. So uh, everybody would have a different opinion and you're more than welcome to your opinion. Most of you are welcome, in my opinion, because I'm kind enough to share it with you. Now, when we pick a pure color, now y'all saw the red when it was um, the purer color. This is a more fire engine red. Oh, there's a red wash, and here is red in a pure color. Now y'all see how weak the washes are, and you've seen the pure color. So what we're, I'm going to do now is... This is the way we usually do it. We'll get a tray and we'll put a little paint on the tray. We have to switch to something. Oh boy, that's going to be nice and thick, it looks like. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thick is good. Tons of kinds of ketchup. This technique is called dry brush. And what we're going to do is pick an appropriate brush. And we have Boku Boku brushes. Ah, I like this one. This is called dry brush. Just barely touch it. Okay? And I tease Lindsay a lot because she's so young and pretty. But the trick is, and Lindsay's been working on this, you have to know when to say stop. Alright? Lindsay hasn't mastered it yet, but she's working on it. So the more paint I put on here, it'll affect it. Same thing with wiping it off. Now, I'm going to start to wipe off. If I wet the sponge, it will take more off. The dry sponge takes less. Lindsay, you tell me when to stop. Hmm? On the face, yeah. Yeah. Now, do I get the um, rays or leave them alone? I'd get them. A little bit. Get them? Not the color. <laughs> it's crazy color. Now, y'all have seen washes and pure paint. I have bright orange. I have bright blue. I have green. I have blue. I have red. I have black. I have white. I have darker blue. What does does anybody have a suggestion? What I do next? Yellow. Mm -hmm. Yellow. Okay. Uh, I do happen to have some bright yellow. Now there is a plain color chart here. So you can see the opposite. I mentioned like we use the reds for the suns and orange and blue is a complement. It is a contrast to cost from it. So Lindsay has said yellow. That's not what I would have chosen. But I'm going to let you guys make these decisions. Now, if I pick up the same brush It'll become orange right quick. Or I can pick up a clean brush. So I'm going to wash it out. And again, timing is important. And dry brush again. And it's way too much fun. So, you know, what would the next color do? And the question is going to be how long do we leave it on? How much do we wipe off? And you can 
wipe it with a sponge, dry, or almost erase it like a teacher erasing the blackboard. You can blot it with a sponge, and that way you're kind of moving down the monochromatic scale. Or you can wet it and go, oh my God, what was I thinking? Go dip this in the washer and take 90% of it off. So you got some options. I'm going to start out blotting. And this time, you tell me, somebody tell me when to stop. Somebody else take charge now. Somebody else take a turn. Stop. You say stop right there. Right, I'm going to go down in these valleys, and it's kind of looking good. Now, this is not bad. I'm not in love with it, but it's not bad. What do I need to do to this, the one thing, to make this a lot better? I've got an idea. I would antique it. That's where I'm going. And I've already told y'all a secret to antiquing this. Spray. Spray paint would do it. You're absolutely right. Now, I've got gold and I have bronze. What, who, your, what would you suggest? The gold or the bronze? I'd go with the bronze. I would too. Gold is too much the same color. Now, it's always better to put it on light and get darker than put it on too dark and try to get light. No, you've got a spot like this. That one bad spot there? Probably after I'm through with it, I would come back to the best color and kind of touch it up. If I do it now, I'd probably just keep wiping it off. Okay. All right. Let's see, I think I have to slide this little thing up. No, nope, it's working. I always test it and make sure it's what I think it is. We'll start out light, and then we can get darker. Yes, you chose the right color. Oh, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that was about the best thing we could do. Now, just to check it, I'm going to put it over here in a hanging situation. And it ain't bad. It may not be great, but it ain't bad. Now, you see that yellow spot on the uh, um, lip? Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing about introducing... And I probably should have got, oh, I did it. The one thing about introducing spray paint is it seals it, and the next colors won't grab it as much. And some of you already figured that out. I've got an idea. We were talking about antiquing it and aging it. And I know the contrast to that color that would give it the most difference. 